Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel is review the auction listings from Bring a Trailer and Cars and Bids and other online sources such as Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace or whatever. And we're looking specifically for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Land Cruisers. And we go through those listings looking for common issues, looking for things that maybe aren't being disclosed, and just otherwise go through items and you know information about these so that you can be better prepared so you can be better prepared should you be in the market for one of these great vehicles. So let's go ahead and transition and look into the vehicle that we're gonna study today, which is this interesting looking <laughs> 1993 uh, Toyota Land Cruiser FZJ80. Uh, so 1993 was the first year with the FZJ or the 1FZ-FE motor. That's a 4.5 liter um, inline six, uh, you know, gasoline engine. Anyway, let's go over the details. This is in Santa Cruz, California. It's got 185,000 miles shown. Uh, let's see anything else. It's got red orange paint uh let's see it's got some 16 inch american racing wheels um it doesn't look like there's a spare we'll confirm that and it's got a roof rack with a tent uh let's go over the details this is a very yeah, interesting thing there's going to be a lot to point out here so <laughs> uh let's yeah let's get into it so it's got the the sunroof it's got a monroe brand lift kit dampers and springs the seller acquired the truck in 2021 and has since added 1,000 of the 185,000 miles shown. Uh, so it's in California with the owner's manual, spare parts, and a clean Illinois title in the seller's name. And let's see, the truck was refinished in red orange. Uh, it features include yeah rooftop tent and a rear wipe window wiper. Like, I don't understand that that's a feature. I mean, sure, that's part of it, but it's, yeah, it's a standard thing. Uh, the fuel door is missing, as you can see in the photo. The Carfax report notes that the truck was stolen in July of 96 before being recovered two days later, and no additional information is provided. Uh, two accidents are noted on the Carfax report. The first one having occurred in February of 2013 involved the truck hitting a parked motor vehicle and had damage to the front end. The second occurred... Three years later, in, involved the truck hitting a, another stationary object and affected the front uh, and left of the truck. So we've got two hits to the front, one kind of front and front left, and yeah, it's been stolen. Yeah. So on the 16-inch wheels, it's got uh, 315.75, you know, Cooper ST Max tires. Uh, so those are yeah, those are going to be about 35 inches. Uh, it's got front discs and rear drums. Okay, so that's an important distinction here. So 91, 92 and some 93 Land Cruisers um, had uh, a semi-float rear axle. Uh, it's easier to tell if it's semi-float and you can just look at it, um, but you can also, yeah, look, and if it's got rear drums on the rear, yeah, it's a semi-float. So this is gonna be, yeah, semi-float. It's probably gonna have like the R12 refrigerant for the HVAC system. Um, anyway, so it's got a yeah 3.5 inch lift kit. Uh, see um, work completed in 2021 is said to have included replacing the power steering pump tie rods and wheel bearing and seals interior looks pretty good so front bucket seats second row bench reupholstered in gray uh, I'm interested to see what they mean by second row bench huh. yeah we'll take a look at that and let's see the air conditioning system is inoperative this sounds like a real real project <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yep. So six dim, six digit odometer showing 185,000. We've already covered that, but I'm going to double down on, on that point. Uh, it'll become important later. Maybe let's see anything else. Uh, work completed in November of 2021 is said to have include, uh, replacing the valve cover gasket, power steering belt, air intake hose, which, yeah, we've talked about how those can leak and they kind of crack and fall apart, spark plugs and oxygen sensors. And ooh, that undercarriage and that wiring, that looks splendid. <laughs> All right, anything else? Uh, the truck is equipped with a locking center differential. Corrosion is visible on the underside. Yes, it is. It's got some yeah new, new parts to throw at it, some like uh, caster correction bushings. Uh, let's see, there's the rooftop tent. All right, cool, let's look at the Carfax. Uh, so it's got yeah, an accident reported, but let's see, lots of owners, right? How many does it say? Six previous owners. Um, so 25 years through owners, one through four, started its life in Florida. 
and yeah, mileage ticked up over the first you know five years to eighty thousand. Then it went to Washington, and then it looks like it was in Washington, maybe ulti- ultimately ending in Michigan, um, after almost another ten years. Uh, and only 30,000 miles. So through the second owner, yeah, quite a bit less usage. And then was in Michigan for a couple years, then to Illinois, no mileage reported on these. There's that first accident in which this car hunted mercilessly another parked motor vehicle. And then again, it hit another stationary object (laughs) in, in 2016. Yeah, presumably still in Illinois. Um, so pretty, pretty good mileage jump through that, what, fourth owner, uh, Let's see. So yeah, up to 183,000, and then yeah, it looks like it was in Wisconsin. It's you know at some point in 2021, and then yep, still in Illinois in 2023. So no other mileage reported on the Carfax except for this 2017 183,000 miles on it. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. The previous owner or the owner of the seller says uh, that it's at a 185 right now, and then a thousand miles has been put on by by him or her. So that would take it to like 184. So between 2017 and, you know, roughly, uh, yeah, when this buyer bought it, um, yeah, 400 or sorry, 700 miles or so. So what's interesting is if you pull this up in vehiclehistory.com, there is one historical sales listing. So it's noted as, uh, yeah, April 5th, 2017. And it shows, yeah, uh, 183,255. And so that's, yeah, that's this one here. So... Um, I must have like read that number wrong because yeah, something seemed fishy, but um, yeah, the mileage seems to match up. So one one eighty three in twenty fifteen or what's he? When was that? Twenty seventeen um, to one eighty five now. So I, I guess that all makes sense. Not a lot of usage since yeah twenty seventeen though. All right, let's go ahead and look at the photos. So this yeah, this is definitely an interesting color. It kind of feels like it was like rattle can because it's not totally consistent. Um, yeah, you can see the front bumpers. Yeah, pretty pretty mangled and messed up. The gaps look weird here across the front. Uh, you know, this little valence panel and these turn signal indicators. Um, yeah, let's see what else. Obviously, missing the the fuel door. It's got a, a little rain visor on the on the rear door on the driver's side, and nothing on any of the other doors. Uh, there's some weirdness going on on the on the rocker. Well, I'm sure we'll see that. We can see some some corrosion here in the back. Um, the paint on the roof is like noticeably faded. That's probably one of the big differences between like a, yeah, a rattle can spray paint job and, um, yeah, actual, you know, like real, real automotive paint. Uh, I'm sure rattle can paint just doesn't hold up under the sun. Kind of presents a cool, uh, a cool effect though. Uh, this rear bumper seems to be sitting a little bit low. Um, I didn't note, and I don't really see any obvious indication that there's the body lift. Um, a body lift, you know, might produce that type of effect, but I'm also not totally aware of, um, you know, people consistently, you know, doing body lifts on line cruisers. It's more of a thing with like, uh, four runners, like they're gen four runners. Uh, but I gotta say like this, the body lines here. So this like line that starts up here and comes all the way through, you know, the, the front and the rear door through the third quarter panel and then terminates here. Like this is one of the best lines in my opinion of yeah of vehicle design just yeah really like that all right let's keep moving around the back of the scene you can see this yes yeah maybe looking at this rear corner here on the driver's side it's it's just been hit not yeah it's not there's there's not a body body lift because the yeah the passenger side looks just fine but yeah you can see that looks like a lot of like nasty corrosion under there um yeah, and the, the bumper's sagging down on that passenger side as well. And then, yeah, fading on the fender flares. I mean, could this could this be a good trail rig? I guess it depends, yeah, on, <laughs> on, on what you want to do. I'm, like, seeing this discoloration here along the rocker panel and the pinch weld, and, yeah, I kind of get the sense that it's rusted out, but can't see quite yet. Um, yeah, this is certainly... Yeah, an interesting vehicle. There's the rooftop tent. I don't really see a, uh, you know, brand on it. Um, yeah, okay, maybe that adds, you know, 500 bucks worth of value. But And it's got some, like, Yakima or Thule tile style um, yeah, bars that appear to be deflecting. I'm not sure they're handling that load. Okay. But, 
okay, yep, so there's there's the rooftop tent. Uh, looking at the, you know, the hood, like looks okay. Uh, I don't know if this marking or this discoloration is um, yeah, on the dash or if that's on the windshield. Hmm. Interesting clips. Oh, those would have been, I think, for the... Uh, so some of these early uh, 80 series would have had like a, yeah, a little chrome piece. Maybe that's what those are for, those clips. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, this this looks awful. There's a pretty big ding here on this valence panel. Yeah, the paintwork looks looks pretty crappy. Another ding there. Yep. I'm not sure. I don't know. This, I get into this like idea of, is this really worth, um, I mean, I guess if it runs and drives, yeah, it's, you know, worth it for like a beater. Always love the mismatched screws. Usually that means that they've seized and like one of them has a bolt still stuck in the hole. So, oh, but it's got a, yeah, it's got a snorkel. So it's all it's all good, folks. You can take it to Riggs and Coffee. <laughs> uh, you know more evidence of yeah, not the best paint job. Uh, the you know the gaskets of the you know the handles were obviously on when this was painted. Um, yeah, that gasket's painted. You can see there's a pretty stark color difference on these fender flares, uh, and it looks like they didn't use a yeah a Toyota. Not again. Not that it matters. Just just commenting that. Yeah, they didn't use the yeah the Toyota fender flare gasket. Uh, little paint wear on this edge. Looks like some yeah some crap was on the uh, on the body when they painted it. Yeah, this is this is certainly interesting. <laughs> this this wouldn't be the the Land Cruiser I'd buy. You can see there's you know like paint and overspray and yeah, poor masking. Anyway, so there's your there's your wheels. Yeah, these rocker panels do not look good. Yikes. I mean this this uh, back side. I guess this no. This is the front on the other side. That looks a little bit better than the uh, than the driver's side. That looks pretty rusty. All right, the rear driver's side. Yeah, it doesn't look great either. And the rear passenger side. Yeah, that looks awful. I think I can. Am I seeing like daylight through there? Or not daylight, but yeah, the underlying like bracket. Yeah, that that's a mess. The seats look pretty good though. Decent leather. The, <laughs> is there anything left of the seatbelt? Yeah, it's like feels feels like it's like halfway worn through. But like this leather, yeah, that looks amazing. <laughs> uh, the steering wheel looks yeah very well worn. Yeah, it's missing the cover there. I mean, there's yeah we're not gonna point out every little thing that's wrong. Yeah, if you want a project and you <laughs> hate hate life or hate yourself, here you go. <laughs> Um, not sure why it's like red, you know, kind of tinted here in the speaker grill. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. You know, the bezels cracked there in the, for the door handle and the driver's side. But again, the leather looks good. You can take these seats and I don't know, maybe, the, I mean, this part, the back and the bottom, you know, they look okay. They look a little saggy, um, especially here at the front too, but yeah, it still, it still looks fine. All right, moving to the passenger door. Hard to tell. There could be some some rust down at the bottom of the door, so it makes you yeah it makes you think you know when you're done using the thing what's the what's the salvage value of it? But one hundred eighty four thousand seven hundred and six miles. Hmm. I don't. So yeah, I, I'm I'm trying to convince myself that. Um, yeah, there's some sort of mileage issue, but I don't, I don't, I don't think there is. Uh, one interesting thing you can see, you know, going. This is going back to the. I think there's a 1996 or seven, the white one, where the the seller um, was basically saying, you know, oh, the 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 instruction manual, the owner's manual has instructions for the diff lock, so that means my truck has them. 
um, just to show in some cases, you know, like Toyota does more than they need to. And in this case, you can see the screen printing, right? So they've included a spot for lights for the diff locks, both the center, this will be the front, that's the rear, even though this particular truck doesn't, doesn't and didn't ever have them. Um, but you know, and same thing, my hundred series, my 99, um, could have been optioned with a rear locker. It had the, um, you know, it had the spot for a bulb. The bulb wasn't there, but it also had, you know, a spot and a spot for a bulb. It had the label and the spot for a bulb for a front locker. Um, again, Toyota sometimes does things where they save money, but other, other times they don't. Um, but just cause it, yeah, it has the screen printing here and a spot for the light doesn't mean that it's got the lockers. Uh, it looks like some holes have been drilled into the console here and then, you know, plugged. Yeah, carpet looks like reasonably, reasonably good though. Uh, second row seats look to be original and in just fine shape. Uh, the bottom of the driver's seat, you know, the like the cover isn't fastened the way it needs to. Yeah, lots of things. I mean, missing the little covers on the grab handles for the screws. Yeah, looking underneath here, the carpet looks surprisingly good. It's hard to tell because it's you know washed out here in the foreground, but at least yeah, on the sides looks looks okay. Um, I'm assuming that the um, the visor here on the um, passenger side or driver side's been um, been replaced. It's a different color, or vice versa. Yikes. Yeah, looking here at the rear, reasonably clean back here. It's got the third row seats. Yeah, seems mostly intact. There's a little like red, you know, tinting, you know, on the plastic. And then yeah, you can see the, again, the quality of the paint job. It looks like there's some different colors, but, um, you know, hardware wasn't masked back here at all. They just kind of sprayed it all. I see a missing screw on this one tail light housing. I presume it's missing on the other side. Yeah, look, looks like it's not there. Yeah, just a really, if you didn't, if you couldn't tell already, it's a pretty bad paint job. <laughs> Never good to see cobwebs on an engine bay. That's the sign of a vehicle that's been parked for yeah, a couple of years without much usage. Uh, same thing, pine needles here across the, yeah, across the weather stripping. Um, 93 probably wouldn't have had the VIN stickers on the fender. So yeah, not, not really much of a concern there, but you're also not getting a beauty queen here. Also see the batteries not being retained properly. That should be, you know, strapped and locked down. Um, noting some corrosion across the engine bay. Uh, it looks like it does have cruise control, so that's good. Uh, and then you can see the AC dryer here. So that's going to be indicative of the, the R12 system. Um, I do, I do note some corrosion here. So these holes would have been from where like the factory, um, you know, like heat shield and sound shield would have been installed. And yeah, in particularly rusty environments, yeah, those, those holes, the paint around them can fail and you end up getting rust like this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure what this is worth. <laughs> this is, it's one of these vehicles that's just more more of a headache. I mean, I'm I'm sure it's good to drive around, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, looking at the undercarriage here in the front, yeah, you can see some some pretty good corrosion going on. Um, you know, I don't mind like the little kind of like flash rusting here on the lower control arm. Um, seeing rust on the drive shaft is not a good sign. And then looking here at these body mounts, yeah, that that doesn't look great either. But we've already established this has got some pretty significant rust issues. Uh, looks like some sort of power steering, uh, you know, cooler relocation kit. I do see some green here, maybe indicating a, a leaky radiator. It looks like it's kind of saturated here. Yep. So yeah, keep that in mind. And just like the, the level of corrosion on this stuff indicates that it's, yeah, it's probably been sitting in a, you know, outside for quite a while. Looking here at the back, yeah, so there's not a spare tire. I don't know what's going on with this wiring. Looks like it's some trailer, you know, some, uh, you know, trailer wiring um, does not look to be properly retained or, yeah, that needs to be tucked up. And the corrosion on the rear axle is horrendous. 
and yeah, presumably looking here at the body in the seams, you can see that there's yeah, there's just more crustiness up there. Yep, hard hard pass for me, but <laughs> but maybe maybe this is something for somebody. I don't know. If you've got that cover, why wouldn't you put it in? I wonder if it's yeah, it's broken. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, this one's this one's rough. I don't know. Does the tent and snorkel do it for you? Um, all right. Yeah, current bid twenty five hundred. I'm surprised there's a reserve. You think they would no reserve this thing? Man, yeah, this is rough. Well, condolences and and best of luck to whoever ends up bringing this home. Um, I'd love to see you turn you turn it turn it into something, but yeah, I'm I'm not going to be the one to do it. Uh, anyway, I think as far as bidding, man, yeah, maybe this will go up to, I don't know, like $6,600. That's, let's do 66, uh, yeah, $6,660, just to be funny. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Interesting. I know, you know, everybody needs a car, right? <laughs> well, thanks for watching. This one's certainly been interesting, and I'll see you for the next one.